Here's how we're going to go ahead and create ragdoll deaths inside of Roblox Studio. In order to go ahead and get started with our ragdoll deaths inside of Roblox Studio, let's go right over here to server script service. We're going to click on the plus icon and we're going to insert a brand new script right here. This script, let's go ahead and rename over to ragdoll deaths, just like this to give a nice descriptive name of what our script is going to be doing. Then up here at the top, let's get rid of this print statement. We're going to create a comment right here for our services. Now, if you're not new to the channel at all, you probably already know that I love to use comments to kind of separate my code into different types of segments. I have services, variables, functions, and sometimes even signals and events. However, we're only going to be using a few different ones this time. Starting up here at the top, let's say local players will be equal to game colon get service players. And if you're unaware of what the player service is, is this player service that you'll see right here inside of the Explorer. As you can see, this holds my player right here, Rusty Silly Band. However, for you, it'll be holding your player. And this will hold all the other players inside of your game as well. Let's to go down here a bit, and we're going to go straight into our functions. We don't actually have any variables for today. And from here, we're going to create a brand new local function. We're going to name this on character added because this is going to be running whenever our character gets added to the game. And we're going to take character as a parameter. So this character as the parameter is going to be the character that was added to the game whenever we go ahead and run this function right here. And let's start off here inside of our function by getting the character's humanoid. If you don't know what a humanoid is, the humanoid is pretty much responsible for all the different important properties of the character, like their health, their walk speed, it even is responsible for playing animations. Technically, that's the animator inside of the humanoid, but you get the point. And so every rigged character, properly rigged character, will have a humanoid unless it is a special condition that it is, does not need to have a humanoid. However, most characters are going to have a humanoid. So we're going to say character, wait for child, quotation marks, humanoid, like this. And that'll be our humanoid variable. And we're going to say humanoid dot break joints on death. Can't type right now, sorry. And this will be equal to false. What this line does right here is break joints on death is typically whenever a robot character dies, whenever a humanoid dies, that is, then it will break the joints of that actual character. And what that does, it makes the body kind of fall apart, which as you'll see in a normal type of Roblox character dying, let's just join the game real quick to test this out. If I were to reset my character, you'll kind of notice I kind of fall into all sorts of different pieces right here. So not breaking those joints on death allows the humanoid and the character to kind of stay intact for the most part. Now, let's go ahead and create a function for when the humanoid dies. So we're going to say on humanoid died parentheses right here we're going to say four underscore we're going to be looping through the character now so we're going to say four underscore descendant in i pairs actually we can just do pairs instead and this will be character colon get descendants with parentheses like this and then we're going to do this so let me zoom out real quick so you guys can see the whole thing so a descendant is different from just a child. It's pretty much another level on top of the child of an object. If I were to say character get children, this return all these child objects that you see inside of the player right now, such as the head, left foot, left hand, and etc. for all these different objects that you see. But the descendants, that's going to go into each and every single one of these parts, into every single attachment. It's going to root out every single object that is a part of this character. It's going to return it inside that array. So that's the difference between get descendants and get children. Now we're going to check if descendant colon is a parentheses quotation marks motor 6D. Which, if you don't know what a Motor 6D is, it's a constraint that's used to hold certain body parts together. So we're checking that if there's one of those constraints inside of our character, then what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to say local attachment, and this will be attachment zero, and this is going to be equal to instance.new attachment. We're going to be creating a brand new attachment, and we're also going to go ahead and create an attachment one as well, which will also be equal to instance.new attachments. So we're creating two new attachments. And attachment zero dot C frame will be equal to descendant dot C zero. I'm going to explain what all this stuff does once we're done with this function here more in detail. So you guys can get a much better understanding and attachment one dot C frame 
will be equal to descendant.c1. Let's go down a little bit. We're going to say attachment 0 dot parent is going to be equal to descendant dot part 0. And attachment 1 dot parent is going to be equal to descendant dot part 1. Now we have this completed. Let's go ahead and say local constraint will be equal to instance dot new all socket constraint. We're going to say constraint, constraint, there you are dot attachment zero will be equal to attachment zero and then constraint dot attachment one will be equal to attachment one and there we'll say constraint oop, constraint dot parent will be equal to descendant dot part zero and then let me scroll down real quick and we're going to say descendant colon destroy with a capital D just like this. Now let's go outside of our for loop right here. So we're just going to drop down two ends right here. And we're going to go ahead and say character, wait for child, humanoid root part dot can collide will be equal to false. Now we're going to go outside of our on humanoid died function. We're going to say humanoid dot died. And we're going to connect our on humanoid died function that you'll see right here. This is the function we created for our on humanoid died. And then all we need to go ahead and do, let me just put some spacing right here. We're going to say players dot player added. We're going to connect a function with the parameter of player and then player dot character added. We're going to connect on character added just like this. So I know that was a lot to take in. Let's go over the script now so that way you guys can get a good understanding of how it works. So let's start up right up here on this on character added function. This defines a function named on character added, as you'll see right here, and it's taking the character parameter, which is the character that was added to the game. And you'll see that this function is being ran down here whenever that character does get added to the game, so everything's lining up with the name and how it actually works. This line is waiting for the humanoid, which once again is responsible for certain character properties like the health, animations, walk speed, stuff like that. This will set the break joints on death property to false which pretty much prevents the character's joints from breaking whenever the humanoid dies which will allow the player to actually remain intact whenever they die this on humanoid died function right here it's just a new function that whenever the humanoid dies this is going to run because we have this event right here saying that whenever the humanoid dies we're going to connect this on humanoid died function then this for underscore descendant in pairs character get descendants do this is a for loop which iterates over all the descendants of the character using pairs this little underscore right here is used as a placeholder for the index and descendant will represent every single object that's inside of that character this condition right here simply checks if the descendant of the character is a motor 6d instance and once again those motor 6ds are simply objects that are used to connect certain parts inside of a character and they allow for movement and jointed parts and they're pretty much really good for rigged characters these lines right here create two brand new attachments and attachments are most often used to define certain positions where constraints like this ball socket constraint can attach two parts together so these lines right here attachment 0.c frame attachment 1.c frame these lines are just going to set the c frame properties of the attachments to match their original positions of the motor 6d which are the co and c1 right here this ensures that the new constraints are going to maintain the original joint positions so that way nothing looks out of whack and these lines are simply setting the parent of the attachments to the part 0 and part 1 of the motor 6D, which are the parts originally connected together by the motor 6D. So this would be like the right arm and the torso, right arm, torso, uh, left leg and lower torso, stuff like that. This line right here is going to create a brand new ball socket constraint instance, which is going to end up replacing the motor 6D because we want to have more flexible joint movement. And this ball socket constraint, if you think about it, it's more like switching from your elbow joint to your shoulder joint. You know, your shoulder is a lot more movable and flexible than your elbow is, for example, because your elbow will only allow you to sort of hinge at the elbow, whereas your shoulder can like full on rotate and pivot for the most part because different joints right there is the difference between a hinge joint and a ball and socket joint. So switching to a ball socket joint instead of those motor 60s will allow our character to be much more ragdollish. 
you could say. Now these two lines, once again, is pretty much the same as these ones. They're attaching the ball socket constraint to the two attachments that we just made right up here which effectively replaces the motor 6d connection that we originally started off with and then constraint dot parent equal to descendant dot part zero this line sets the parent of the ball socket constraint to the part zero of the descendant which pretty much just completes the whole setup of this new joint constraint that we just created and then since everything's been thoroughly replaced by this ball socket constraint and these new attachments we can just go ahead and get rid of the original motor 6d which is this descendant right here and we just no longer have a use for it, so we may as well get rid of it. Now, this character, wait for child, humanoid root part, that can collide equals to false. This is pretty much going to prevent the root part from colliding with other objects whenever the player dies, just so it's not so messy and kind of flopping around everywhere. This will just kind of keep him from bumping into too much stuff. Now, once again, this line is simply connecting our on a humanoid died function, and you already know what this part of the script does. So I think the only proper thing to do left is simply to test it. So let's press this play button right up here, and let's go inside of our game, and let's press escape, R, and then reset. And you'll notice we are now all ragdollish. That's pretty cool, but one thing I really want to do is make a really big tower to stand on real quick. Just like this, I'll turn off cast shadow and let's go ahead and play right up here instead. So now it's time to stand right over here on the edge and then reset our character and you can see the ragdoll effects in full view. Anyways, that's how we're going to go ahead and create our ragdoll deaths inside of Roblox Studio. If you enjoyed this tutorial just as much as I did, please make sure you like, subscribe, and comment down below. I hope you have an absolutely fantastic rest of your day and I will see you in the next tutorial. Bye.